What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here with another video. One year on from the magic night in Amsterdam, which we'll cover a bit later. But we've got a few. Can't believe it's been here, yeah. Can't believe it. I know. I've uh, got a few things to cover today. I've uh, got my brother Sim with me. How's it going, Sim? Same old, same old. Hopefully, Sunday could be the day. Maybe a bit of easing in the lockdown restrictions. We'll see. But uh, yeah, I don't think they're not expecting my breath too just many yet. changes, to be honest. But not uh, holding my breath. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe but, we'll get to we'll get to go to the park. Yeah, you'll we get get unlimited exercise instead of one of one exercise a day. Um, Come on. <laughs> but the first Don Bele can finally get a run in. <laughs> Jose will be uh, jogging past his house every day. Mm -hmm. um, First thing I want to talk to you about is Marcus Edwards. Now, Marcus Edwards? Yeah, so, so he's had quite a good season out in Portugal. So obviously we signed, uh, sold him to Victoria in Portugal. He finished ninth. Scored against the Arsenal. Yeah, he scored against the Arsenal. But he finished ninth in best midfielder of the season out in Portugal. Which ninth? Actually, yeah, which is actually really interesting. Uh, Bruno Fernandes finished first in that poll. Um, but this is like an official thing from, from the Portuguese league. Um, he has a £15 million release clause on his contract. And Tottenham have a 50% um, 50 sell-on fee. So we'll get 50% of the profits that they make on the transfer. Mm. Is this something we should be looking at? What, getting, getting him back? Yeah. Um, I've seen a bit of him, but out for Vittoria, he, he looks um, like a tidy little player. But Pochettino didn't fancy him. He clearly has some attitude problems. A few good games, for, uh, for, by, by all means, he's had a decent season. I, I don't think his his stats have pulled up any trees. He's, got, he's only got, well, I think, about four or five goals. It's not, it's not like he's got like ten or fifteen goals or assists or something like that. So it's not been a mad season. Season but, was cut short though. Yeah, season was cut short. To be fair, and he has did score against did score against Arsenal at the Emirates uh, with a nice goal. I see he scored a few goals I've seen out there. He's a tricky little winger. He's still young, isn't he? How he must be not even twenty yet. Is he twenty yet? Uh, I'll check that for you. But carry on. Um, obviously, there's there's a case of unfinished business at Spurs. He's twenty one. He's twenty one. He's twenty one. Okay, fine. Um, there might, there's probably a sense of unfinished business the way things ended with him at, at Tottenham. I don't know whether he's willing to come back or not. Maybe Jose can see something different in him. Obviously, I, would, uh, I wouldn't mind if we, if, if, we, if we thought he was uh, good enough to take a punt on and we brought him back because he came through the academy. He has a strong link to Tottenham. Um, and I, I, he clearly, uh, even Pochettino said on his day he, can, he, he was like a little messy. Uh, he had all that was his, his kind of downfall, wasn't it? That was yeah, kind of I think downfall. maybe those comments got to his head. But if he really has turned around his attitude, then maybe uh, I would, it would be something to look at. But I'm, I'm not 100% convinced just yet that uh, every, everything is all good now with him and he's now the player he's turning out to be. I think he's, he has clearly had a few good games. No, no, he, no one doubted his ability. is whether he can do it consistently and whether he has the attitude to apply himself to the team. Um, so these are things that still remain big questions with him but you know he is only 21 and I, I, I just wonder if we do look at him and see any and see any reason that we could possibly bring him back uh, you know even 7 million could be too much for us to spend at the moment so I, I, I don't know if we're going to be spending any money but um, I don't know about this summer but maybe and maybe we'll give him another year and see how he's doing and, and if the really you know if he doesn't sign a new contract then uh, maybe it could be something to look at you know, six, seven million to spend on a player, um, first of all, who has roots in Tottenham, second of all, who finished in the top 10 of midfielders in, in, a, in a top division. Well, not top, top division, but, you know, uh, they've got some good players in that division. And also a player who's going to have a sell-on value in about five, six years if he keeps going in this trajectory. Surely it's a good deal. Um, but, yeah, I think maybe one more year is probably smart I move. think you're another year. I think give it another year. I think you need to see how he does in a, in a full season, um, uh, and you want to see him do more consistently. Yeah, uh, but yeah, but that's that on Marcus. Let me know in the comments section below. Should we take him back, or is one more year, or or is is the uh, boat sailed on him? Let me know in the comment section below. Next player I want to talk to you about is Serge Aurier. So Serge Aurier has split <laughs> massive opinions in the Tottenham fan base. Um, a lot of people want him gone. A lot of people think 
He's a good player up, up you know, the attacking side of the pitch. Uh, but nobody, I think everyone can agree that nobody wants him near our penalty area. Yeah. Um, but what's come out is that apparently, through a various number of sources, that Serge Aurier is reportedly going to be signing that new contract because his contract ends in 2022. So uh, not long to go on that. So apparently he is going to be signing that extension. So what do you make out of that? If it's true, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't surprise me to be honest. I think, um, I think he has improved a lot since Mourinho's come, and I, th- I, th- I think um, that due to this whole situation at the moment, there's obviously going to be limited funds for the foreseeable future. Um, if we sell Aurier, um, then I can't see us get. You know, we're, we're not going to get that much money. Maybe twenty-five million for him if we're lucky. 30 million except for, we're not there's not too many players maybe Max Ahrens who you could get for that money in this current market who's going to be a massive improvement on him and he is going for free yeah you need you look we need another right back on, on top of Aurier so if we let Aurier go we can't have no one at right back if we're not going to mm. sign anyone so it kind of so it kind of makes sense from that point obviously Aurier is a massive a point in our team that we do need to improve on there's no doubt about that um, saying that he has been very good going forward, but you can't can't deny that either. I think his his the way he been getting assists and stuff since Mourinho's come in, he's really developed his attacking side. He, he's a lot more of a threat. But you, we just can't get away from the fact that he costs us so many goals on that side of the pitch. You can't get away from it. Yeah. Every time you think he's turned the corner, he gives away another penalty or gets sent off again. So he's now been he's now been what three years at Spurs? That to this year was his third year. So. It's kind of a thing. If he would have improved, he would have been, it would have, it would have happened already. It's, 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 it's just some, that thing you're gonna have to put up with Serge Aurier. But the fact of the matter is, the situation we're in with the coronavirus, we're not we're not in a position where we can just let go of players very easily, um, especially players who have a bit of quality like Aurier in certain aspects of the pitch. But we can't just let let go of him um, and expect uh, it easy to replace him and easy to. Uh, replace him with quality that is going to improve on him. It's not so easy. So I think giving giving him a new contract, man, maybe Mourinho can develop the defensive side of his game a bit more. It's the best option for now, and maybe getting Mourinho on a free. Yeah, you know, like I said before, he splits a lot of opinion, and I think that what you said is quite right. That his uh, attacking outlet is has been brilliant this season. His assists and stats show that. Um, he's even got a couple of goals this season, hasn't he, to his name? Yeah, so, the one against Wolves uh, springs to mind. That was a great goal. Yeah, it was. Um, but, you know, we've been playing a lot to his strength, trying to keep him as far away from the penalty area as possible. Do you not think that we should take that a bit further and kind of convert him into a winger? Like, keep no, it wouldn't work. Why he's not? not good enough to be. He's not good enough to be a winger. He's good. He's good at going forward from the right back position because he's allowed space because the the space is occupied by whoever's playing right wing for us. Um, they're they're occupying the fullbacks uh, movement and then that allows space for Aurier to overlap and and um, get crosses in and 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 he's not as closely marked as the other attacking players. If he was to play right wing, that wouldn't work because he doesn't have the trickery. He doesn't have the attacking know how to get away from a fullback. Like, I'm not like so sure. I think he back. can take it past him, man. No, I, 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 he has pace. Don't get me wrong. Um, but he's, he's, I don't think his pace is blistering by any means. He's not like an Aaron Lennon or any or Carl Walker or anything like that. Um, but he has decent pace. But he relies on space being left open from the defence. That's what he relies on. He relies on overlapping yeah. a winger. I don't think if he was to be our pure, a purely our winger, it, it would it would work by any stretch. I don't think he also, also he has the attacking output um, you would need from a winger to be, to be good. He's good. He's, he, the attacking output is good for a fullback, but it's not good for a winger. Mm. His, his, his trickery, his crossing and shooting is good for a right back, but if you're, if you're judging him as a winger, it, it's, a, it's not going to pull up any trees and it's not going to be yeah, as effective. You, you can't judge him as a winger if he has been playing at fullback. So you don't really know. Um, I disagree with that. I just think you can see his quality. I, I don't think the quality is, is, is there to being a wing. I really don't. I, yeah, I, I, no, yeah. I get your point on that. He relies on space. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comment section below, is it right to offer Sir Jure a contract or shall we show him the door this transfer window? Or do we need to keep him just because we don't have enough money to, to make the signings? Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are. Uh, but next, I want to talk about Hyun Min Son. 
and he has completed his three weeks of army service. There's been pictures Come on, Sonny. everywhere online, and he will be returning to England next week. Um, that's great news. news, isn't it? Fantastic news. And I heard he got 10 out of 10 shooting accuracy in his uh, shooting uh, training. <laughs> shooting I'm not joking. Apparently he got 10 out of 10. 100% accurate. Would you expect anything less? Sharp shooter, man. He knows, he, knows, he knows where the target is. He probably didn't even look. He probably just swiveled and... Poor. No wonder he can do it Kim both handed. He no can do it both handed, apparently. Both handed, he can do it. No wonder yeah. Kim Jong Un has been in hiding since he's been there. <laughs> exactly. He doesn't doesn't want to feel the wrath of uh, Sonny. He's probably on a snipering. He can do whatever he wants, Sonny. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter the range. Doesn't matter the hand. Um, but yeah, great news that he's come through that. Um, also, it looks like he's fully recovered from his uh, broken or fractured arm, which is yeah. great news. Um, Hopefully, if the Premier League does return soon, he's going to be fit and firing, raring to go. Um, and, yeah, look, he, he's always been a... He, he loves his country, Sonny. He's never hidden that. Uh, he's, he's a massive patriot. It probably gave him a lot of pride to be um, doing the military service, even though... He, he probably, I don't know if he wanted to do it or not, but probably he probably did it with pride and with all the effort he, he could have, knowing how, what a proud man he is. And it, it's no surprise that apparently he finished top five in... Um, uh, in something I don't know, top five in military men or something like that. He got some award, and he got 100% shooting accuracy, and all the stats you expect from Sonny. So the awards come flooding into us, you know. Now Sonny's award, a couple of stadium awards, some silverware we're getting to lift, even exactly. uh, during the yeah. pandemic. Just end <laughs> the season now, give us all the silverware. That's, that's <laughs> what it's all about. But yeah, uh, well done, Sonny. Very happy for him. Next, what I want to talk about is obviously last week, or a couple of days ago actually, it wasn't even last week, it was the beginning of this week, it came out that Jose Mourinho and Willian had kind of come to an agreement, they've spoken on the phone, and Willian has kind of agreed to join Tottenham. But reports on the contrary to that, Willian apparently has come out and said he hasn't actually had any contact with Jose Mourinho. Do you think this is a transfer that's going to happen? Um... It's not so. It's not a transfer that we're desperate for. No. We have, we have, we you know, we saw Bergwijn in January. We've got uh, Lucas. We've got Son. We I know we've still got Lamella. Um, so it's not. It's not a player who I, who screams like we're desperate to get him in, and he's going to command a big wage. I'm guessing he's on at least one fifty two hundred at Chelsea. Might even be more. Um, and seeing as he would be a free transfer, all free transfers these days uh, pump bump up their their wages by at least a quarter just because well, even at 32 even at 32 probably he's not he's not going to want a pay decrease is he uh he's going to want one 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 last payday uh he knows his quality look i'm not going to he's a quality player um whether he will one that we desperately need need for and that we're going to shell out a big wage packet for him uh at this price at this age i'm very much doubtful of that um, I think DV. I think I'm, I would no doubt. I would no doubt that Jose would want him because Jose managed him before and knows and knows all about him. But I, I'm not not so sure this one is uh, one that is 100 percent going to happen. I'm not so interested in it happening. To be honest, I know he's a good player, and I know he he has quality, but he's not a player who's going to get you bags of goals and bags of assists. We already have our own frustrating Brazilian in Lucas. Well, I don't need another one in William. Um, they, the thing they, is they, about they, Willian, he he can really do us good from set pieces. That's the one I think he's a really good at set. pieces Yeah, he is good from set pieces, and he's he's a good dribbler as well. And he's got he's got a lot of skill about him, no doubt about it. But he only he, he in terms of his effectiveness in front of goal, he um he, he doesn't get too many goals. He gets like only five against goals us. Season. Huh? Only, only against us, him. apparently. Yeah. yeah, bastard. He gets like five goals a season. Look, he's and. I don't doubt he's a good footballer. He's just he's getting on a bit. Um, there's a reason why uh, Chelsea aren't mad about um, re-signing him on a new deal, and I, I don't think he would be a massive game changer for us. Or saying that, given that the fact that we might not be signing too, might not have a lot of money, it might be the best we can get. Yeah. Yeah, so I wouldn't look if we signed. If we did sign him on a free. I wouldn't be against it. I wouldn't be like, oh, it's a terrible signing. It would be a decent signing if we got him on a free. I'm just not that excited about it. But I think the only thing going for the deal was that it's, that we might not have money. So, and we got Jose. So, I would say no at the moment. But things could change. It all depends on what's going to happen with the Premier League. If it's going to restart and all, and you know how much money we're going to lose. It's, all, it's a lot, lot of open factors at the moment. I would say the deal's not a goer though. 
for for our pride alone, I would say no. Just rip up that contract in front of his face, like yeah, do after what he did to us. I, he, this guy doesn't have any morals. He doesn't know well, what it is to uh, have an agreement with a club, and he just negs it straight away. Yeah, he's a he's a little bastard. Yeah, he, nasty he can, piece of work. I, I don't want him anymore, anywhere near the club, to be honest. There's rumours yeah, he might go to Arsenal. I'd let him go to yeah, Arsenal. Exactly. They, they suit each other let perfectly. Yeah, they really do. He would be perfect for Arsenal. Just a little, <laughs> a little uh, tr- tricky player with not much output. Look how it didn't, didn't do well with David Luiz as well. I was so happy when they signed David Luiz. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, let me know in the comment section below. Do you want to sign Willian or... Rip up that contract in front of his face like I want to do. That's, that's what I think we should do anyway. Um, and moving on to the last point before we have a talk about Amsterdam is, I think this is one that we all, all knew that was going to happen is Koulibaly is not interested in Tottenham after, you know, I think Tottenham and the Napoli Chiefs are quite friendly or they, a few reports came out from Dimazio saying that no surprise. we could be interested or we're in pole position. But yeah, Koulibaly ain't happening. I think our opening offer was five million plus fourth, probably. <laughs> I'll, I'll guess that, that was probably our opening offer, and they were like, "Yeah, I'm not interested in Tottenham anymore." Um, I, I, look, it was a non. It was never going to happen. Uh, Eighty million for Kulabali was like, like that's how much they're going to demand. Even in, in these times, where apparently players' values could be slashed by a big amount because of this, uh, because of the virus, it would still cost us a, bit, a big, big chunk of money to buy San Kulabali. And at 29, you know, albeit he's a very good defender, I'm not, let's not be around the bush, it was never going to happen. It was never going to happen. We're not going to spend that money on a, on a centre-back of that age with no resale value. Um, and I know, I think it would be a bit of a game-changer if it was to happen. No, no doubt about it. I think he would improve our defence, no doubt. Spurs would never sanction that deal, not in a million years. And uh, it, and even if they did sanction the deal, it would be a bit of an uphill battle to beat off a lot of competition for him, a lot of people looking for a signature and looking to, uh, who are probably prepared to pay a lot more money than us. So I can't see this deal ever being started, to be honest. And it's no surprise if the, I don't know why you read it, but uh, if the deal's dead, then that's not a surprise to me. Um, and you know what? It was a non-starter in the best of times. Never mind during this pandemic we're going through. It's never going to happen. So... Never going to happen. The, you know, I know we were very close to deciding, but we're getting big deals for like Dybala and stuff. But you've know, got to remember, the Dybala deal at the time, Juventus were desperate to get rid of him, and they were prepared to sell him to us for like fifty million. Now they're desperate to million. keep him. Yeah, now they're going to get. Now they're desperate to keep him. But I'm, I'm saying my point being is. We, we weren't about to, we, I know we were about to shell out 55, 60 million, but th- for, for someone like Dabala, that was a cheap deal. We were going to get a bargain for him because Juventus was so desperate. That's the only reason we were going to get him. It's not like we were pushing the boat out and spending 80, 90 million about, about to sign him. We were never going to do that. He the also only, had a potential only, resale value as well. Yeah, but the only reason we were ever close to the deal is because we were, because of Juventus was so desperate to sell, we were going to get a cheap deal on him. So it was like a superstar bargain, basically. We were never going to, we were never going to push the boat out to get Dybala. So uh, well, I don't expect us to be pushing the boat out too much, especially also given the fact that we did push the boat out on someone like Ndombele uh, for 50, for about 60 million. And it hasn't worked as of yet. I know things could change, but as of yet, it hasn't worked out too well. So that's probably playing on his mind as well. You know, we spent all this money on this player and, you know, haven't seen any reward just yet. So yeah, um, you can see what Undombele is all about. You can see I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that the, the trial is a massive failure and, and, and he's not going to be any good for some. I'm just saying Levy's probably thinking every, every time we spend big money on a player, something goes wrong a lot hey, of the We time. smashed our transfer record for Musa Soko, didn't we? Oh, we didn't yeah, smash yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> Took him two years to do it. You know, so, so speed, oh, we broke our record for Soldado. That didn't happen. We, we spent big on Bentley. We spent big on Darren Ben. The, though those haven't, ha- you know, come come off very well. Lamella. So I, it probably plays a Lo lot Celso. on Levy's mind. Whenever he, I know Lo Celso spent big in it and that, that's paid off well, but that, he seems to be in the minority at the moment, which is probably worrying. Yeah. Um, so look, I don't expect us to be shelling out massive money on anyone in the, in the too distant future, to be honest. All right, that's fair enough. Let me know in the comments section below what are your thoughts on that one. And finally, a year on since we were in Amsterdam, uh, Lucas Moura hat-trick sent us to the Champions League final. You know, nobody gave us a chance in hell, especially at half-time. We walk into the stadium, we're already 1-0 down. Um, what? Yeah. 
a trip that was. What a night. Is that your best night supporting Spurs? I think so. You have to say that was the pinnacle. I remember that uh, obviously we were going to the game and I think we got lost outside the Cruyff, the Cruyff Arena. Well, it was us two and a bunch of us. Was it Josh Tiano? Yeah, yeah, all well, them lot, yeah. Um, and we, I remember right, we just couldn't find the away end. Yeah. We were like running around in circles for like a good half an hour. We got there <laughs> fairly early, I remember. Like we weren't going to be late or anything. I think and alcohol I think maybe, had a, maybe had a part to play in that. Who, what? I think alcohol might have had a part to play. Yeah, maybe. That. And also being attacked <laughs> by that Ajax fan. I remember oh, yeah. started, so you started to uh, chant outside the arena and all of a sudden these Ajax fans started to like, what are you saying? Like, you know, they go all, uh, all up in our face and like yeah. want to start fighting and stuff. And uh, yeah, alcohol probably did have a lot to play, but we couldn't find the entrance at all. I remember it took us a long time. We had to, we ran one way and then ran all the way around the other way. It was madness. And then we, we ended up being a couple minutes late for kickoff. Um, we're already one nil down, but um, man, that, that that was a special, special day. But then, obviously, going to we were battered in our first half, proper battered, going two nil down, more than deserved. Ajax were on top of us playing beautiful football. You're thinking, how can this? We're not going to do this again. Uh, like the thing is, even in the second half, Hakim Ziyech had about three chances to seal the game for them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like even in the second half, they had their chances. Yeah, but. Lorente just turned the tie. That beautiful yeah. man. That beautiful target <laughs> man. He turned the tie for us. It was, it's just funny because I think in the first half, I, I don't think he played the first half, but oh, it was almost on. as if it, he came on at half time. But the five, I think, was it Son? Did Son start or was he, was he out of that game? I Son remember. started, yeah, I think he did. Yeah. I think Son and Lucas started for that game. And uh, we tried to play our football in the, in the second half. In the first half, sorry. We tried to play through them, but they were just too good, Ajax, at playing football. So we did what all, all great teams do when, when the playing football's uh, not working. You get a big forward up there and you lump it. And <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just funny because... Pochettino uh, doing Jose tactics. It's just funny because for all the great football that uh, Ajax are playing, they just could not handle the long ball. They couldn't handle it. Whenever we played it up to Lorente, he won it every time. He was able to bring it, bring it down. They couldn't handle the physical side of the game. And it just made me wonder if we adopted those kind of tactics earlier, maybe we could have been more fruitful. But we, um, obviously, we, we were lumping it to Lorente the whole of the second half. Delight for all, his good, for all his good defending and his goal. He couldn't handle Lorente. Every, just one striker he couldn't handle was Lorente. He was bullying him. He was winning every header. And it's, it just paid off in the end. It just absolutely paid off. And um, especially in the last minute, when you're thinking time's ticking away, it was 2-2 for a while, for a good 20 minutes. We got it back to 2-2. Mm. Because we scored two quick goals. You're thinking, oh, we're going to go on and win it. But, but we, were do we dominated those to to last 20 minutes, knocking the door, hitting the crossbar. We just couldn't get it in. And for it to happen, we've literally, as the clock hit 95, it was stuff of absolute dreams. Stuff of absolute dreams. I couldn't believe absolute what I was seeing. Absolute scenes in that away end was something. I just, that, everyone just lost it. I don't know if we're ever going to experience something like that before. No, you can't. That was coming back even, from the Even now, fans of double, triple the age of us, you know, even them, it's their best night supporting Spurs. And like, wow, to come back from effectively 3 0 down um, yeah. to win in 45 minutes. And Lucas Mora, a guy who the jury was out from pretty much a lot of Spurs fans on Lucas Moore, you know, oh, this guy can't finish, he's got no end product. And suddenly he, he, he knocks in this hat-trick in the second half to send us all into delirium. A hat-trick of left-footed finishes as well, all on his weaker foot. And that, that second goal when Onana spilled it and he had that trickery, that footwork in the middle of the box to get it past three or four players, that was just insane. All three finishes were absolutely clinical and it just makes you wonder the quality this guy has. Even yeah. on his weaker foot, he has a lot of quality in him. And it's just a shame for me that he hasn't, you know, this season he never really carried it on too much. He hasn't had, he only scored four Premier League goals so far this season. This guy has a lot more, a lot more to offer than, he, than, than we've seen so far, I think. And he you know, has a lot more quality. You know, he's the only player this season that has been ever present for Jose. He's played, taken part in every single game. He's played in every game? Yeah. How mad is that? I didn't know that. Um, 20, 26 that games, I think it was, or something. Look, he's, I, think, I, I think a part of the, a lot of the reason why he struggled is he's had a lot of... Um, he's had a lot of 
pressure on him with all the injuries. Kane's been out, Son's been out. He's uh, he's had to do a lot of the work. He's played up front, which is not that. He, I thought he he will start to improve once Jose came in. He was playing that right inside right wing attacking position, linking up with Aurier, and then yeah, that kind of stopped because of the injuries. Um, yeah. Hopefully, he gets back to that and he get back to the the form that he, that that his early the early days of the Jose era he was showing. But um, that night, he really became one of the best de- deadly players in Europe. And he really showed his quality. I think he has so much more to offer, Lucas. I'm, I hope uh, once the pre, under first preseason with Jose is done, he can really start showing it. But um, he will live. He will be a cult hero forever because of that night. He really yeah. would be, and, and really fully, be. fully deserved as well. I remember us partying in, in Dam Square till like three, four in the morning that <sighs> night. Um, and oh, we get back, we get back. back to our hotel, and there's a massive big screen, and you remember that big screen in the in the basement of the hotel. Yeah. Oh my god. And oh, we get I back there. Movie. I think I think me and Ashley got back, and you and Kingsley were lost. So I think you and Kingsley was. I don't know where you and Kingsley were. <laughs> but um, get back. I put the highlights on on the big screen, and literally just tears just start pouring down. I'm like, we're in really the Champions League final. It's just oh, like man. when it hits you. Amsterdam, when it hits you, it hits you. Um, do you reckon that is the best Champions League tie of all time? First of all, was it better than that Liverpool tie the, the night before? I think so, because the Liverpool tie, however amazing it was, which was incredible, it was extremely one-sided, that specific tie. Yeah. Just the way the Spurs game ebbed and flowed and how, we, how they took a 3-0 lead and then we came back in the same game, um, that just made, I think that just makes it that much better. Also, the fact that it was a, literally the 95th minute we kept, we we won and win it. I know Liverpool scored four goals, but it wasn't um, didn't go down to the wire like the Spurs game. Um, I think it has to be one of, if not the greatest, Champions League tie of all time. Um, and just to get to, oh, it's just unbelievable game the way the way it panned out, and just also the in getting the management as well, how the tactics uh, kind of changed the game. Um, the scenes at the end, everyone just in absolute, just crying and oh, I just I can't <laughs> believe it's been a year. I can't believe it's been a year. I know. Um, and I know. you know these things don't happen to Spurs. They just don't. We're the ones who just get screwed over all the time. What would have been? What would have been the most Spurs thing? Well, to we ever didn't win the before? final, so yeah, true. But what what would have been the real Spurs thing to happen is to get it to two two and then not go over the line. That would have been true Spurs. And the fact we actually got that third goal in the last minute. That just signaled to turn on the corner, but obviously it's it pretty much all been downhill from that moment, to be honest. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I saw a tweet saying that if I could live life in loop from that night in Amsterdam until just before kickoff in that Champions League final, how good yeah. was life in that in that kind of? That period? was the best life. Life peaked during that moment, though. That moment. Yeah, it was. It was so good. Uh, you know, you had the the final and all the said all the square and the the Spurs um fan whatever you call fan. You were zone. just constantly in a good mood from then until then. Just yeah, like really, like, we're in the Champions League final. Down. I didn't. No one could say anything to me. No one could say anything to me. Nothing. <laughs> I was just happy. The happiest guy. We're in the final. What can you say? We're in the Champions League. And Arsenal, final. Arsenal get to Europa League final against Chelsea, and nobody cares. They don't even want to. No, they, they don't even want to go to us because they know we're in the Champions League final. They they didn't even care. They they were too worried. They didn't care about winning it themselves. They were too worried about us winning the Champions League. They didn't even if they won it. They, it didn't matter to them because if we won the Champions League, that was it. It's over. It's finished. Yeah. You know, so it was just that was the best two weeks, but or however long it was. It was actually it was stretched around. out a bit. It was about a month, wasn't it? Well, yeah, because there was a month from the end of the season till the Champions League final, wasn't it? Yeah. So though I just need to be taken back to that. But I miss those days. And even it's another one, when we played Everton last game of the season, all the Everton fans all coming and singing Spurs songs, supporting Spurs, because yeah, we're yeah. going to play Liverpool in the final. Uh, oh. It's just brilliant times. And also, Such it was the whole times. new thing of going into our new stadium as well, because that was all very new to us then as well. Mm. So it's just a very nice period. But there you have it. Let me know in the comment section below. Put your Amsterdam memories or where you were that night, where you watched the game, how you celebrated let me know in the comment section below. That's our news from today. Like, subscribe, and comment below. And as always, come on, you Spurs. I'm on you Spurs. <laughs>